guys and welcome back to some more ultra modded survival in the last episode we mentioned how we need to take care of our lava because we can't realistically have two different lava sources and make machines and do all this stuff so also we have a lot of sand holy cow I should drop all this off but yeah, we need a lot more ender tanks to get lava in a lot more places. So that's what we're going to do. And the limiting factor of ender tanks is blaze rods. Like I'll show you right now, a ender tank requires four blaze rods. And what we don't have is any blaze rods. So what we're going to do is get a spawner from the nether and then use it in our farm. But before we get a spawner, we need a we need to really quickly make a, another grinder. Oh wait, we have one. So let's take that and take what else should we take? Um a chest, I guess. Um chest. Here we go take with that and so where we're gonna put this is in the second floor of our base which is right here I made it kind of nether themed you can see the nether brick up top the obsidian bricks and yeah so we just want it somewhere in the center also I just realized we're gonna need conveyor belts so one second okay so it turns out we have 11 conveyor belts, but I just want to make maybe like 16 more. And then let's turn them all to purple conveyor belts. So all we have to do is like so. I think, yeah, we have some ceramic dye. And we have a lot of ceramic dye. Holy cow. So yeah, the ceramic dye is what I had to use in the glass that you saw at the second level. Because uh, 1.6.4 doesn't have any... Uh, colored glass, so you have to make it using uh, their own recipes, and that involves ceramic dye and such. So we're just gonna put some conveyor belts and push them all to here. So since the grinder only takes a 5x5 five five area, and I'll see you guys when that's all ready. Now that we have our conveyor belts all ready, let's just go get our blazeman. Well, the blazeman spawner. So let's just pop in here, visit the nether very quick, even though it makes me kind of nauseous, I think because of the texture pack, but well, I'm going to be there very quick. And so where's the spawner? Over there. So let's just go that way and get ourselves a spawner. Honestly, this is basically the best way to get a spawner. So let's pick this up and go to our nether portal without any issues hopefully come on up oh. I just hope it doesn't get stuck anywhere but yeah this is the pain of traveling with something with gravity gun mode on up oh. so we should be able to go through and it will follow and will follow us into the overworld. Up. Oh. Up, oh, where am I? And where's my spawner? Okay, there it is. We still have our spawner, which is very good news. And so we just have to put it through there, go through, and plunk it right down here. And there we go. We have ourselves the blaze spawner. So now all we have to do is go back out very quick come on let us go out I don't wanna go with the blazeman and then we just set up the grinder very quick right over where do we want over here I guess just take this one out put the grinder facing that way oh and we have to power this thing which is gonna be a pain but eh I'll be fine We'll just put this here. There we go. And then let's get out of peaceful. Because while I was building the stuff, I wasn't peaceful. So 
I might sacrifice some notch apples for that. But very soon, Blazemen should be spawning. And then whenever they touch the ground, the conveyor belts should be pushing them towards here. Now, while that's all going on, let's just explore the house a bit more. So as you can see, I decorated a bit with these blocks. And you can see by the name it's given, it's a stained stone pillar. And so how I did all this was with forged micro blocks. Also, you can see the glowstone lights that I put in. And so, how forge micro blocks work is you take some item, block, whatever, and then you put a saw on top of it to get these stone slabs. So basically, you can make a slab out of anything. And then with the slab, you can either make a panel or you can make a pillar. Pillars we have. A panel we don't, so let me just show you what a panel looks like. So, panels contrasted to uh, half slabs. They're basically half a half slab. So that's a half slab, and that's a panel. As you can see, it's half of that. And you can cut this down again to get a cover. And then you can't cut a cover again. A cover is just the most it'll go to. And you can't cut. Oh wait, we can. So you can get a strip, which is... I wonder what that looks like. So let's just get one of those. I didn't have to use a strip, so... Let's just put the cover right next to it. That's what that looks like. And I wonder if you can cut this sideways as well. Whoa, you can get a nook. I did not know nooks existed. Holy cow. Let's see what this looks like, I guess. So let's put this right here, I guess. That's so tiny. It's like, it's really tiny. And then what does a nook look like? Nooks are like a sixteenth, but you can only put them in corners, basically. They're not as uh, manipulatable as nooks. I mean, notches. And notches, I'll show you in a second. Let's just take all these down. And so I don't have any notches on me, but notches are made just by doing a side cut of a pillar and you get a notch. And that's why I made the saw. And by the way, the saws are pretty easy to make. You, you can either make the ruby saw, the sapphire, the period dot, I use Sapphire first and then Pyridot. Doesn't really matter really. So let me show you guys why I decided to get into Forge Micro Box. Are you ready? Dun dun! We have our second level to our base. What I had in mind after I saw this completed was it reminded me a lot of the Bowser's Castle in Super Mario World if you guys are familiar with that at all. Because Bowser has like his name in the castle and it's all whatever. So yeah, this is what that reminds me of. And we will have a third level eventually. But yeah. So there's a symbol over there from Nakaru. And there's another symbol. I might explain those symbols one day, but yeah, this is our base. And I'm pretty happy with it. It is awesome. And so, there's one other pretty awesome thing that I want to show you guys with the base. And that is, we have our room for our dragon. Instead of having to deal with being inside all cramped and everything, he gets his own area above our base. So yeah, that's, I mean, I didn't finish these rooms yet. They're still full of snow and stuff. All I worked on was the inside of our blaze spawner room. Because that seemed to be the most important thing. And I think I'm permanently stuck on fly. Oh yeah, because of the gravity thing. I keep forgetting that G is permanent spread. But yeah. So it looks like they're not spawning. Which is weird. I mean, I am. 
Is it just too bright in there? I think it's too bright. I'm just gonna set it to nighttime very quick, just to see, just to make sure that this works. So, I hope you guys don't mind too much. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they do spawn. So, what are we gonna do? We can fortune kill them very quick, because I could really use a an ender chest very quick. So let's just kill him. There we go. And kill you. But yeah, you can really see how disgustingly ugly the blazes are when with this mod pack. I mean, I tried to change them back to vanilla. I tried to change all the mobs back to vanilla. But for some reason with Sfax, it doesn't just rely on one uh, texture. It relies on multiple. So I couldn't really get it to work. But yeah, now that we have 10, eh, I think we'll go for a couple more. Just kill some more blazes very quick. And then we'll get to making a lot of stuff that we need to make. So come on, just spawn. It's not that hard. Also, I don't have food on me, which is a bit of a problem. But, oh, there we go. Come to me. Give me all your stuff. And so, yeah, 15 is more than enough. So let's just make an ender chest very quick. Ender chest. Well, two of them, actually. So, oh wait, we don't have wool. That's a problem. Um, what are we going to do? I'm going to go shear some sheep. And we'll be ready to make a whole bunch of these ender chests. Okay, so I got the wool. I got mostly black wool, so it looks like we're going to use an ender chest that's just black for storing our stuff. And yeah, actually I should have made an ender tank instead of all these chests, but we could just kill another blaze very quickly since they seem to be spawning a lot. So let's just kill all of them. There we go. And collect all the stuff, I guess. I wonder how many... Oh shoot, we're as a person. That's a bad. That's really bad. Come on. I just want to fly. Let me go. There we go. So we have just enough for an ender tank, I guess. So let's put that there. And we need to use white wool since that's what the ender tank is hooked up to. So let's just search up wool. Take the white wool. And instead of a chest, we need to make a cauldron for the ender tank, if you guys remember. So, ender tank, cauldron, we need one of those, and then we should be able to make this. Yep, now we have an ender tank of lava, and let's just take one of the generators, we can take this one. So let's pick this up, and we can just put this over here. It's going to be a problem. Um, so let's chop this down. Put this here. I don't think they're aggro, are they? No, I don't think they're aggro. So let's put this here. No, that's the wrong way. Put it here. And then this should be grinding them. Hopefully. Please be grinding them. Yeah, it's grinding them. So we're just gonna have it kill the blazes, and it's gonna basically shoot stuff out unless we put an ender chest down. So let's just put the chest down very quick over here. And they can see through, I guess, maybe. This is a bit of a problem. What can we do? Um, let me see if I go kill them, if they still want to bother me. So let's put this there, kill him, and then, do you drop anything? We need to make sure we take care of all of them before we get out. There we go. And I wonder if they're going to still be aggro. Also, we can open this, which is no problem. Actually, we can use a regular chest then. What am I doing? Let me just use a regular chest. Because I thought that I wouldn't be able to open the ender chest because there's a block above it, basically. 
So let's just put this down there and see what happens. Do they aggro? No. And the grinder takes care of them. Awesome. And so the only downside about the grinder is it doesn't give us as many blaze rods as me killing them personally, but it just makes it automatic, which means as long as we're at our base and it's nighttime, also that one can see me, but that's not really a problem. It just grinds them. So we can just put the lava generator, well that on top I think, no, it has to be on the side. So let's just pick this up really quick. And then place it over here. Set it to export. And then this should always have power and always be ready to kill blazes that spawn. And that's pretty perfect. Also, so the reason why it has to be nighttime for blazes to spawn is that the roof is made out of nether brick half slabs which are forged microblock half slabs and so they let sunlight through kind of so that's why we are not able to have them spawn at night I could put another row of slabs on top but I think that'll be good for now and yeah this is our blaze man spawner room basically soon I will have the other rooms connected the left and the right but for now, should be fine. And I just realized our base is facing east and west. Like west is behind us, east is in front of us. So if we go, let's say, to the front of our base, which is where we're going to now. Come on. We have a view of dawn, basically, whenever the sun rises. And we'll be able to have a view of the sunset when we get maybe the next layer of our base and yeah I think that's pretty cool so the reason why we got all those blaze rods is for ender tanks basically so once we have all those ender tanks we're not going to have to have all these tanks of stuff all these tanks of lava everywhere we can just have one ender tank in that area and it will power the generator we also won't need these redstone engines or anything like I will show you in a bit all we have to do is like plunk an ender tank right there put a lava generator right there and everything will just be powered instantly so let me just make a couple more ender tanks very quick okay now that we have our ender tank and our lava generator all we have to do is set this to export and then it just powers everything and yeah this entire thing is now completely automatic we just have our sand being generated as well as our gravel so yeah that's that done and we can hold off putting a lava ender tank here because the me system doesn't use abs as much power and we should probably pick up our wireless terminal very quick and drop all this off I guess and let's see how our spawner is doing I mean it sounds pretty well like the second they spawn it looks like the grinder instantly kills them and it has a lot of mob essence I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet but I don't know we might do something because I'm pretty sure you can make like a farm with mob essence. Let me double check very quick. So mob essence can be used. Huh. I don't know what we can use it for. We can... I'm pretty sure there is something you can use it for. Because I thought you could use mob essence to like spawn stuff factory wise. Like have... Use mob essence and then a certain kind of spawner to spawn mobs. But, I don't know. I might have to read up on that. But yeah, so all these are gonna just insta-die because of the grinder. Hopefully. Yep. That's dead, that's dead, and dead. Which is pretty awesome. It's just working like I want it to. So, now the only limiting factor of getting a whole bunch of ender stuff is ender pearls, shockingly. 
but like look we don't have any ender pearls but we have some ender lilies and what you can do with ender lilies is you can place them and eventually they make I uh, ender pearls but they need to be placed on end stone for it to be really effective for them to grow so I don't think it's worth planting them at the moment. We're just gonna have to uh, farm ender pearls from Endermen for now. Which isn't too bad a thing because we have this looting three swords, so it's not too big a deal. So let's just pick up our one of the ender chests very quick and drop the other one here, I guess. We'll just put it right there. And then the other one is gonna go where our cow farm is. Because as I was building everything, this got pretty full. And I'd rather this just go straight into the ender chest. So let's just pick this up very quick. And then put an ender chest over here. And yeah, this is just gonna collect stuff. I, don't, hmm. I guess it also stores the items that are in there. Even after you break it. But anyway, let's just... Go back to our base and now that we are back we can see that when things get farmed over there they're just going to be transported right here and the reason why i didn't put an ender chest at our blaze farm is that it doesn't make as many it doesn't make blaze rods as fast as let's say our enchanted golden apple cow farm does and you you just saw that this just filled up from the cow farm we have so yeah and another thing we can do is make an ender pouch and so an ender pouch if I could find it is made like so and so the only thing we don't have is the ender pearl so I'm gonna go get one very quick now that it's nighttime and hopefully we'll be able to make this okay now that I went out to fight a couple endermen I got some ender pearls and now we can just make our ender pouch also right before I started this I made the mistake of turning all of our blaze rods into into blaze powder so now we have a lot of blaze powder but we don't have any blaze rods but then again the grinders working so that's not too big a problem Blaze rods have now become a renewable resource that we can easily get, so it's not too big a deal. So let's just get some wool very quick and make ourselves an ender pouch. And so what's awesome about an ender pouch is that, let's say I take some stuff like these, and then I open up the ender pouch, and then not only do I have access to whatever is in the ender chest, I can always I can also deposit stuff into the ender chest. And so there's one last thing that I need to do that will make this completely awesome. And that is an import bus. Uh, which is which one? Basic import bus, which is like so. So we need to make this, I think, which what are we missing? I thought we were okay. Let's see, so we don't have Certus Quartz. Right. We wasted all of our Certus Quartz. I'm gonna go mine some and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, now that I got some Certus, I can just finally make our import bus very quick. Make one of these. Make one of these, hopefully. And then... I don't think we have a sticky piston. Let's just see very quick. Oh, we do. Wonder how many sticky pistons we have. Let's just check very quick. Sticky. Oh, I guess that's the last one. Interesting. Well, what we can do with this basic import bus is, let's just uproot this very quick. Let's get our pick back. And just pick it up very quick. And I wonder, I don't think items will spew everywhere, but 
I wouldn't be too surprised. Nope, items don't spew. So all you have to do is put it connect there and then put we'll just put it over here I guess you know that's gonna be a problem so let's just pick this up connect it like so and there we go this should be transferring all the stuff into the ME system so what's gonna make this ender pouch really awesome is let's say we get a whole bunch of cobblestone or something Let's just get a whole bunch of our cobblestone, okay? And then we have our ender pouch, and we can just drop all this stuff off, and it instantly gets deposited into our ME system. So what else we can do is turn this into an ender chest, and so instead of being overfilled on sand, it will just be deposited into an ender chest which will make it go straight into the ME system. And with the wireless access terminal, we have access to all our stuff, so it's really easy to dump stuff in and out of the ME system. The only difference is, with the ender pouch, we can be anywhere in any dimension, and it will get deposited into the ME system, but with the wireless terminal, we can only access the stuff in a close range because of the Wi-Fi boosters. So that's why we really need to get this ender pouch because when we go exploring and we want to drop stuff off, it just makes it a lot easier. But what I wanted to get at was that we were going to use this ender chest over here. We'll just uproot this very quick. Come on. I know this isn't the right tool, but I'm lazy. So now we just put an ender chest right there. And we should probably pick that up. There we go. And yeah. Also, I did attempt to wire this generator all the way over here, but since aluminum wire has resistance, it didn't it didn't end up working too well. So I just decided to abandon the idea. So let's just drop off the sand. And as we can see, it just starts draining into the ME system. Albeit kind of slowly, but it's not too bad. And so when we look at the... Whoa, that is a lot of sand. And I don't know what to do with it all, except maybe compress it. Because there isn't anything wrong with having too much sand, really. Because traditionally, it's not thought of as a renewable resource, because... In vanilla Minecraft, you can't really make sand unless you have a glitched out sand generator which uses bugs and stuff, which is usually just on snapshots. But yeah, this is our sand. And you can't triple compress sand, you can only double compress. So the only time it'll become an issue is if we have a lot of double compressed. But that shouldn't be in a really long time and with that i'm gonna call the episode here i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did leave a like down below let me know what you guys think and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one see ya